It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Drake Bulldogs head women's basketball coach, Coach Allison Pullman. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks for asking me to be on. Can you talk about, of course, how you knew that you wanted to get started in coaching in college women's basketball? Um, well, I didn't really want to get started in college women's basketball as far as being a coach, um, but just one of those situations where doors just continued to open um, I loved my experience as a college um, student athlete and then just enabled me to then go to grad school. And from there, a door open, door open, door open. And here I am about 25 years later. So, yeah. What was that like going to Northern Iowa and getting to put on that Iowa jersey? Um, well, for me, it was a great fit. Um, I was recruited by... Tony DiCecco and their assistant coaches, Colleen Heimstead, Tanya Warren, and just, it was 25 minutes from my front door and it was a, it was a great fit for me. And I had a phenomenal experience. I wouldn't change anything about it. How was that experience? Like, as you said, 25 minutes from your home. So getting to play in your hometown. Yeah. Well, um, I grew up in small town, Iowa. And so this, this community, um, was a little bit larger Um, but yeah, 25 minutes from home, it was, it was, it was what I was looking for. It was important for me to stay close to home. Um, but then also to have my family enjoy my collegiate experience and like myself getting a chance to enjoy continuing to, um, be around them was, was exactly what I was looking for. As a player, what was that like getting to have your family and friends come to most of your games? Well, I think it's, you know, I, I think it's just special. I, I think it's amazing. And, um, you know, now you've got a lot of, of young people who are used to, their parents are used to traveling to watch AAU basketball tournaments and other, you know, just different events and such. So, you know, people might be a little bit more accustomed to traveling. I'm not sure. I don't, um, it's, it's, it's a lot different, I think, than what it was, um, what feels like back in the, in the dinosaur era, but, Um, it was, it was fantastic. It's great to be able to, um, allow, you know, your family, extended family, you know, back to having some pride, um, in your institution and really like where you grew up in your hometown and stuff, I think is, I also think that portion, um, of my experience made it, made it extra special. As a player, what were some of your biggest accomplishments? Oh, um, you know, as a player, biggest accomplishments, I would say, you know, you could, you could probably pinpoint a couple different games, but what I would say was just, you know, each and every year that, um, I was at the university of Northern Iowa, you know, we, we continue to elevate and get better. Um, I think overall the program, um, and really the opinion of the program, I do think transformed and changed through my era and then continued on. And so just more than anything, the the overall program and perception of um you know the UNI Panthers for women's basketball um I think I think our team my era and being a part in our like the teammates that I had we were able to kind of shift the mindset and shift really how everybody perceived and viewed um our collegiate program coming out of college what was that like getting to coach at your alma mater Amazing. You know, I mean, it's, it's just, it's a special situation where, like I had mentioned before, you know, a couple doors opened and then, you know, being able to stay comfortable and stay with the people that I had been coached by and grew to love and, and adore, and then being able to, you know, work alongside them. It was, it's just a really, really special experience. What was that transition like from you from going from being a player and a teammate to then getting on to the coaching staff of Northern Iowa? Yeah, I think it's, I mean, I think it's unique because you go from being teammates to, you know, having to coach players or to hold them accountable or to, you know, 
proctor study hall or whatever the case it might be with different job duties that you know um that were required of of me well, as a as a then graduate assistant um but i i mean it's just you you kind of figure it out and you navigate it and um there's obviously boundaries that you had to adhere to but um but yeah i was i was very fortunate to have that opportunity while coaching at northern iowa what was that experience like start, first starting off as a grad assistant all the way up to associate head coach um i i mean it's um, awesome you know just having the the different opportunities to to just have different job responsibilities and to you know kind of get your feet wet and um, jump in and and do a bunch of different things and and be challenged. Um, and you know, I think one of the unique things is just developing your own coaching philosophy of how different people do stuff. Um, and and you can learn something from everybody that you're around, whether it's something you like or dislike. You get to you get to discover those different things about your own um, personal, I guess, um, you know, thought process. As a coach, what was that like getting to see those players put on that same jersey that you put on while coaching at your alma mater? Yeah, I mean, really special. You just, you know, back to the development of a of a sense of pride of, you know, where where you kind of came from and what you were able to do and represent. So I think it's I think it's just a really, really special thing to to love your experience, to love where you came from, and then to give back to it. While being the associate head coach, what were some of your biggest accomplishments as the associate head coach? Um, let's see, probably, you know, just, I, I would say more than anything, you know, watching, watching young women, you know, have really great relationships, graduate, um, you know, back to, we can talk about wins and losses and big games and, you know, NCAA tournaments and NIT births and things like that. But, you know, watching them, um, you know, like I said, graduate and, and then go on, get married, you know, have their own families and then be able to come back and give back to the program, I think is, is probably one of the most unique and probably special things to watch as a coach. As a coach, what was that like getting a coach in the postseason and going to the NCAA purse? Um, I, I'm, I, you know, like you, it's indescribable. It's, it's so, so special. It's, you know, Climbing a ladder and cutting down nets is probably one of the best experiences and feelings that um, you really don't um, know how special it is until you're in that moment. But um, yeah, it's 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 unbelievable. It's it's really it it why I'm stuttering so much is because it's one it's difficult to explain, um, but it's also it's just such a, an amazing amazing euphoric sort of feeling. Um, yeah. Of course, for you, what was that transition like leaving your alma mater to become a head coach and coming to Drake? Um, you know, a, a fascinating experience, um, mostly because, you know, at the time, um, our we had a very, very young family. So moving um, from Cedar Falls to Des Moines felt um, a little bit interesting and a, and a big leap of faith. And I've always had so much respect for Drake University and Drake Women's Basketball what they've done here and what they've been able to do, you know, historically. Um, but it was, it was a whirlwind and, and an amazing, amazing leap of faith that, um, that our family took and, and very excited that at the time, um, we did just that. Of course, what was that feeling like getting to take over the program after the legendary coach left the program? Yeah. Um, well, it's difficult and mostly because, um, I adore and absolutely love Jenny Baranchek, um, working with her for nine years here and, and being able to still stay at Drake, um, was, you know, it was one of the hardest decisions, um, ever having to make on whether, you know, to continue to work with Jenny or to stay here and, um, you know, continue to, to do the best that our coaching staff and our group and our program could do, um, to continue to keep the level really, really high and continue success here. But, um, but I'm ecstatic. I love Drake. I love, I love the women here. I love, um, our program. I love, you know, just everything about it and couldn't be happier, um, than to be the leader here. What was that feeling like for you to get that call from Drake to become the next head coach? probably similar to climbing a ladder, um, to, you know, cutting down nets. I would say it's, you know, it's a, it's a big, it's a, 
it's a really big deal. And I was genuinely very, very excited. And, you know, Susie Glazier Burt was at um, the press conference and just so special to be able to, you know, be named this head coach and, and to have her name as our, our head coaching title. It's, it's just a really, it's a, it's a great place. Um, love it here and, and very, very special experience. Of course, while being the associate head coach, what were some of the things that you took to help you to become the head coach from Jenny? Um, You know, I think back to, you know, just all of the coaches that you're exposed to and work alongside, you you just begin to fill your bag with a lot of different things, different, you know, whether it's even just um, just vocabulary, you know, where you're talking and trying to teach. And, and I think one of the really special things is, you know, Jenny's a phenomenal, phenomenal teacher. And I think, you know, watching her passion and her competitiveness, um, on a daily basis was, was just awesome. And being able to, to work with her, um, you know, I, I still, it, it just brings a huge smile to my face because we had so much fun, um, together and, and we're able to accomplish some really, really amazing things. As a head coach, what was that feeling like first taking and getting to step onto that court of Gannett Center? Um, well, it was a familiar sort of situation. And I think, you know, you, nobody ever really prepares you for, um, you know, whether it's the first year of being a head coach or the second year, or even, you know, heading into the third year, it's, it, it's just every year brings a different set of challenges and opportunities. And so just embracing that and, um, you know, it, it was, you know, a great feeling love. I, I definitely call this place home and, um, really, really special to be able to, um, yeah, to lead this program and, and to do it with, you know, our coaching staff and the women that, um, that are here. As a head coach, what has that been like getting to build the coaching staff and the players around you? Um, you know, I think just the, the type of people that we attract here, I think are, are very, very high achievers and, you know, getting the opportunity on a daily basis for them to grow and be open to growing. And the same thing, you know, we all have to be able to look in the mirror and to do that. And so just having that growth mindset of wanting to each and every day experience something that's going to push you a little out of your comfort zone to continue to grow and evolve and get better and, you know, experience different new ideas and to, to run with some things and also to fall on your face and get back up and, and just keep sprinting. So, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's awesome. Can you talk about, of course, the culture that you've built for the Drake women's basketball program? Yeah, well, you know, I think, I think one of the biggest things, um, you know, we talk a lot about is, is just, you, you've got to, there's a couple of things that you must do and, oh. and basketball is such a big piece of what we do. So you've just, you've got to, you got to love the game. You have to, you have to love basketball. You've got to, you got to love to compete. And then clearly you gotta love where you to be, where your feet are, you know? So, so that's right now loving Drake and loving your teammates and the people that you get a chance to do it with. So, so that culture and just, um, you know, everyone throws around the word family, but being able to, you know, family is real ugly sometimes. <laughs> and so just having the, you know, the openness to know that, you know, we all are kind of doing this and, and moving things along and, and really describe it much, much more as the opportunity rather than an obligation. Who are some of the teams that you face in your conference? Um, so we have, there's 12 teams in the Missouri Valley Conference. So um, you and I. We also play the University of Northern Iowa, Bradley, um, Southern Illinois, Missouri State, Belmont, Murray State, Evansville, Southern, I think I said Southern Illinois, um, Illinois State, Indiana State. Um, I hope I'm not missing them, but yeah, that should hopefully put a bow on the 12 teams there. Of course, what is that home game atmosphere like when teams like Indiana State come versus going to Bradley and playing them away? Mm. Um, you know, I, I think, I think it's a really special thing. You know, uh, one of the things that I love about Drake is how well we are followed. Um, we led our conference in attendance this year. We average right around, you know, 3000 people, um, for all of our home games. So I think it's amazing when you run out and you can hear the roar of our crowd and everybody's on their feet and cheering and, you know, the fight songs going and stuff. And so, um, I, I think it's our home court is definitely an advantage for us, 
um, to play at home. And, you know, I do think our conference is, I think our conference is evolving. I think um, people are really invested in women's basketball. And I think we'll continue to see attendance numbers rise as, you know, as all of the schools in our conference continue to, to raise the level and to continue to get better. As a head coach, what are some of your game day routines and rituals like? Oh, well, we always have a shoot around usually on game day and um, I like coffee. <laughs> so I drink coffee pretty much every day. That's not really a game day, um, but I'm, I'm not super like, I'm not superstitious. Um, I just kind of do my normal stuff and get, you know, things ready and prepped to be able to, you know, get our team um, ready to go and off on the right foot and whatever it is, you know, sometimes game days for me look different. Some days it's, um, you know, a whole lot of catching up and some days it's more so maybe taking 15 minutes to read a book. So, um, I don't really have a specific game day routine. As a head coach, what was that first feeling like getting to step onto that court and getting a win? Um, you know, awesome. Our, the very first game that, um, that I had coached at home, we played, we played Creighton at home and ended up, um, winning on a game winner on a three and Katie Denevier knocked it down and, you know, Creighton's a very, very good team. And it was, yeah. So I can, I still remember it. And I actually remember where she shot it from and it was she was not towed up to the three point line. <laughs> she was, she shot it at about 28 feet and you cross your fingers in that moment. And it was a, it was a big, big shot. Um, and yeah, thanks for asking. That's kind of a fun one to, uh, to reminisce about. Of course, what does that recruitment process look like for those prospective student athletes? You know, I think it's different. You know, I think it it's different for every, every person, every young lady that we're, you know, potentially talking to it's, you know, really trying to find a fit and, you know, Drake university is a, is a high academic institution. And, you know, you got to go back to that culture piece. You've got to go to school. You got to want to, you know, have high academics and all of those other pieces about, you know, basketball. And ultimately it comes down to just really, really finding the right fit, not only for the young lady, but also for Drake and our team and what we do. As a head coach, what are some of the things that you look at in those prospective student athletes when out on the road recruiting them? Well, I think, you know, I think everybody wants good people. You know, you've, you've got to, you want to be surrounded by amazing people with high character who um, really back to have the skill set that really fits what we do. So um, yeah, so we look for people that um, are relatively versatile and are able to, you know, shoot threes and play some defense. And, you know, I, I would, I would definitely say it's, it's specific to, to really back to the question before of really, really what fits us. What does that official visit look like at Drake? Oh yeah. Interesting. Um, you know, just a whole lot of fun and way too much food. Um, so it feels like we eat every five hours or two hours, I guess, more than anything. And um, just try to do as much as we can with supporting the other student athletes that are here at Drake. If we have a home, um, home, different home contests, whether it's soccer or volleyball or football or whatever's going on on campus and just, um, you know, kind of giving, trying to do the, our best to give them a snapshot of, of spending time with our team. Cause that's the best part. And, um, really feeling like a, a Drake student athlete for the few days and the opportunities that they get a, get a chance to, to, uh, to be on campus for that official visit. As a head coach, what is it like seeing those freshmen put on that Drake uniform for the first time versus your seniors putting it on for the last time? Hmm. You know, interesting. I, I don't know. Um, I think it's, <sighs> That's a, that's an interesting comparison because there's definitely an excitement, but there's also, you know, like a sadness because usually the last game, whether it's NCAA tournament or your senior day at home. And so, um, you know, there's, there should be a lot of joy and a lot of probably gratitude for whether it's your experience or just being where you are. So, um, you know, that's an interest. I don't know that I answered that one very well, but that's an interesting, that's an interesting comparison and question. As a head coach, what is it like seeing your players go on and achieve great things, whether it's going into the WNBA or going into the corporate world? Well, I think that's the expectation. You know, I think as coaches, that's our job is to, you know, 
to show them what it is about chasing opportunities and they need to figure out exactly what's really important to them and then go, you know, go figure out how to, how to make those things happen. But, um, but it's a really special thing. We have a couple seniors this year that are probably going to go out and change the world. And, and I think it's awesome. You know, we have one that's going to go play overseas in Spain and we have, um, you know, a couple others that are going to complete nursing school and, you know, and then someone who's probably going to go on and be an NFL wife. So <laughs> we've got the full gamut of, of things that are happening. And, um, but I think it's, I, yeah, I, I mean, I love, I love the best part about it is when they come back and they tell their story, um, when we have alumni weekends and stuff and, and we invite all of those people to come back and getting a chance to not only hear their love of their experience while they were here, but then just to hear the success stories. As a coach, what is it like seeing your players go on and becoming coaches and take things that you've taught them into their coaching career? Yeah, well, we have a few that have gone into coaching. I mean, I think it's, I think it's awesome. I think, you know, it's also amazing listening to them, you know, back to tell stories about how, you know, they, <laughs> they're, they're sorry <laughs> that they did some things that, you know, that were that were, you know, how they acted or whatever else, because then they're having to deal with it as a coach at that time. So, um, so I think it's unique. I think it's, I, I mean, I think it's awesome if they want to get into coaching, I think they realize too, um, the amount of time that it actually takes to continue to develop those relationships and, and to stay invested. What are some of your future plans as head coach at Drake? Um, future plans, um, you know, just have an amazing summer and then get ready, geared up for, for next year. And so I try every single day not to wish any time away because it really goes fast. Um, and you know, those freshmen, as you had alluded to before, become seniors real, real fast. And so, um, just kind of trying to hold on and, and, um, you know, just have fun along the ride. What if I switch of those college freshmen entering their first year of collegiate basketball? Uh, can you state that one again? What advice would you give those college freshmen entering their first year of collegiate basketball? I think probably just communicate more, you know, more times than not, you know, the, the little bit of nervousness that they have and, and just, you know, just going for it as much as they possibly can. Cause you always think that there's, everybody's been in that position before. Um, and you always think that you're the only one or the first one that's ever been there. Um, but just, you know, just go for it, have fun with it and, and really, really love on your team and enjoy your experience. What advice would you give those players looking to play professionally, whether it's overseas athletes unlimited or the WNBA? Probably the exact same advice that I would give a freshman, you know, I mean, it's, playing this game has got to, you have to continue to find joy and love and, and, um, you know, just, just love every single second of it because it does, it goes really, really fast. And, um, yeah. And I would just say back to just enjoying, you know, the people that you have the opportunity to do it with. What advice would you give those players looking to enter coaching after their collegiate career? Yeah. Um, I think just an openness and a willingness to do anything and everything that it takes, um, learn as much as you possibly can. And, and whether it is that you like something or don't like something, you know, continue to, to speak up and come up with ideas and to be spontaneous and, you know, just to, um, yeah. And also to give back, I would say, I think, I think it's really important for all of us to, whether it's volunteer to referee a little kid's camp or to, to help work camp or to, you know, do a, run a, a youth camp, um, you know, in a neighborhood or something of that nature. I think it's just important, you know, as women, as student athletes, as, you know, just to impact young girls and continue to want all young people to, to stay involved with basketball and, and with sports. What advice would you have those coaches looking to coach at their alma mater like you have? Mm. It, you got to love it. You know, <laughs> you gotta, you, you have to enjoy the people you got to embrace, um, you know, the, the people that have come before you and the people that you were, you know, continuing to do things with, I think you've got to have a large level of, of pride, um, in your experience and in that institution, uh, to be able to, to do that sort of stuff. And I think, I think then it just becomes kind of frosting. I think it, that's when the special stuff gets to happen because, um, you know, if you've enjoyed your experience, you're going to do everything you can to really represent that institution to your, to the highest of abilities. 
What advice would you give those assistant coaches looking to get started in coaching and one day become head coaches? I would just say, enjoy the, enjoy the, the, I don't know, the process and the journey. And sometimes we're so worried about what's coming next instead of enjoying what we get to the opportunity to do now. Um, and you know, whether you have a five-year plan or a 10-year plan, sometimes, sometimes you just need a, a one day plan or a, a month from now. And so just, I guess, just relishing in being in college athletics is definitely a, I think it's a blessing. I think it's an amazing opportunity. And so just, just enjoying it um, and giving it your all. What advice would you have those future head coaches looking to build their own program and build their own legacy? Well, I think they have to discover exactly what it is that they want to do and, you know, and, and what suits them. Um, I think that's when your character and your personality get to come out. And so um, I guess just being confident in who you are. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with Drake Bulldogs that? Um, you know, that's a good question. I think we're just, I think we're on Twitter and Instagram and everything is just Drake WBB. So yeah, you can check it out. Thank you again, Coach Allison Palmer for your interview and best of luck in your future as the head coach for the women's basketball program at Drake Bulldogs. Thank you very much for asking me. Thank you. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Coach Allison Palmer, for your interview and best of luck in your future. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.